Well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in uh, sunny Central California. It's warm and muggy today. I um, thought I'd come to you with another update about our Philips network, our uh, patient vitals. Um, this is the second time I've recorded this video, so hopefully I get it right this time. Uh, there was no audio on the first one. So just an update. Um, we're, we're cabling these guys up, uh, the, these two uh, switches here and uh, all the edge switches, which look just like this one. Uh, in fact, this one's only here because uh, there's no room for it in the closet right now. So that's why it's uh, there. And uh, this uplink cable here goes up to this switch right up here. That guy. Uh, that's one of our core switches. So, uh, Everything was going pretty good, we, but we had some issues. So let me uh, reset my uh, high-tech drawing here. Um, and hopefully we, we can do this better this time. Um, so the, basically the way we have these set up is uh, we have those two switches over there you just saw are right here. And they go out to the edge switches using what we call an M-lag. And basically it's like setting up a, an aggregate link, which you normally do switch to switch. Well, using an M-lag, you can do it from two switches to one switch. So, at least the way we're using it this way, <laughs> in this case. Um, to do that, you have to connect the two switches. You set up a, a VLAN between the two switches, inner switch communication VLAN. Give it a layer three address. Doesn't matter what, because it's not routed anywhere else except between these two switches. And uh, then uh, that way you can set these two, you can set them to connect to a single switch. And theoretically, you can lose either switch and not lose communication to your edge switch. That's the theory. So uh, in practice, what we saw is while it was set up like this, yeah, I put my laptop on here. This switch I consoled in and I was pinging this switch. Oops, <laughs> this switch up here. And one by one, I rebooted these two switches, and I never lost communication to the other switch. So that was that was great, perfect. Um, until uh, until I went ahead and connected these switches up to my my core. So I connected this guy to this switch here, which is the one I just showed you in the rack right there. And no problem, can ping everything, looking good. Then I connected this guy in right there same switch it's a different their aggregate links going to these two switches but this one is a different aggregate link than this one so it should shouldn't affect one of them shouldn't um, as soon as I plugged that in I lost management access to all of my switches all across my campus so I run over here and I pulled the links out and one by one everything started coming back well heck I just left it that way because it, it was my Friday. I'm going home. I'm not gonna not gonna mess with it. So I thought about it over the weekend and thought about it and thought about it, and my mind kept coming back to this guy right here, this link between the two distribution switches. I thought, what if that was somehow creating a loop? So I looked at the the VLANs that are across that that link, and sure enough, my management VLAN was there. The two new data VLANs that I created for these switches were there. Yeah, I don't think that's right. <laughs> so I yanked those off. So that the only thing connecting these two switches, or the only uh, VLAN going across that link, is uh, was the inner switch communication VLAN. And by the way, that little skinny line on the page looks like this. Uh, we got two 40 gig connectors, 40 gig cables connecting those two switches. It's overkill. We don't need it. But I had the cables and. We wanted the redundancy, so there you go. Okay, so once I did that, I came back and I plugged this guy in. Let me get you a little closer so you can see. I plugged this guy in. So now we have this guy plugged in here and this guy plugged in here. No problem, everything looked good. I was still able to ping all these switches. Uh, I didn't do any reboot tests, but uh, it called it good enough. So now let's fast forward to yesterday where my boss Hi, boss. You're beautiful, lovely. She really is. She's, she's awesome. Um, and we were down here kind of rearranging the cables, relabeling them, 
because let's face it, I'm a slob, and uh, you know, she likes things that look like that. See, that's that's her work up there. <laughs> this this is my work over here. Um, actually, I'm not that quite that bad, but I mean, it's it's we're still setting it up, so. I don't tie wrap and bundle everything while we're still setting it up. It's, once it's all done, then I go back and, and tidy everything up. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So as we were working on these switches, this guy here, which is like I said, just sitting here because there's no room in the closet it's supposed to go to, um, we took the cables off because they were too long. We wanted to put a couple of shorter ones on um, just to keep it out of the way. So we take them off and I plug this switch into this lower switch. And when I did that, I lost management connectivity to all my switches almost instantly. Huh. So, what effectively happened was, it was that switch I'm pointing to is this one right here at the very top. And what, what, the, the, what the situation was, was this fiber here had, was disconnected. It was connected to this switch and to this switch. And there's no reason why that should have happened. And yet, it happened. So, uh, I came back, I pulled that out, and I pulled this guy offline, and I actually pulled this guy offline too. Just, let's just take this whole thing off the network. And within about five minutes, all my switches were back. It took time, it was one by one, they all started coming back. So, that made no sense to me, because that's been cleaned up. Um, only the necessary VLANs that, that are needed are going across these lines. Um, this is a different lag than this one. So I don't know. Um, I'm going to have uh, the guy that des designed this part, of, this part of the network over here is going to take a look at this. So I've got, got him this drawing, I've got him the configs that I put into these two switches to, to make all this work and the configs from these two switches, and then a sample config from, from one of these, because they're all identical, except for the management IP address and the SNMP location ID. Um, so I'm gonna send that to him, and we're gonna take a look at this tomorrow morning, because um, we can't figure out why this wouldn't be working. Sorry, my earbud's coming out. So we're gonna take a look at that and see what we can figure out, and uh, we'll keep you guys updated. You know, if you've got any ideas of what could cause something like that, I'm thinking it's either like a spanning tree issues, like a broadcast storm. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, I'm sure he'll get to the bottom of it because he's, he's a very smart guy. Uh, and I know I've got some very smart viewers out there because some people call me on things I say that they don't agree with, and I can tell they know what they're talking about. So, yeah, leave a comment if you've got an idea because... Uh, I, I don't care if there's people out there smarter than me. <laughs> I welcome it. Um, that's how I get my job done, is there's lots of people out there smarter than me. Uh, I'm just tenacious. So anyway, that's all I got for this week. As always, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the notification bell if you want to know where I'm rambling on again next time. And uh, we'll catch you guys all next week. Oh, if you need any prayer requests, leave those down in the comments as well. We'll catch you guys later. God bless.